Hi everyone, welcome to a new day that we come together to pray with sacred scripture. I'm Sister Mary Elizabeth and Seeds of the Word Committee, and I would like to welcome all of you on this Thursday, October 29th, to do like the dividend to pray with sacred scripture. Today we will be reading the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians, chapter 6, verses 10 to 20. The responsorial psalm will be Psalm 144, 144. Verses 1 to 2, then verses 9 to 10. The Gospel today, Gospel of St. Luke, chapter 13, verses 31 to 35. Chapter 13, verses 31 to 35. So you can get your Bible and we can start the reading of the Word of God for today. Be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his might. Put on the whole armor of God, that you may be able to stand against the wills of the devil. For we are not contending against flesh or blood, but against the principalities, against the powers, against the world rulers of this present darkness, against the spiritual hosts of weakness and in the, in the heavenly places. Therefore, take the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all, to stand. Stand therefore, having fashioned the belt of truth around your waist, having put on the breastplate of righteousness, and having shod your feet with the equipment of the gospel of peace. Besides all this, taking the shield of faith, which you can quench all the flaming darts of the evil one, and take the helmet of salvation, and the word of the Spirit, which is the word of God. Pray at all times in the Spirit, with all prayer and supplication. To that end, keep alert with all perseverance, making supplication for all the saints, and also for me, that utterance may be given me in opening my mouth boldly to proclaim the mystery of the gospel, for which I am an amb ambassador in chains, that I may declare it boldly as I ought to speak. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. In these ten verses of chapter 6, we see this beautiful testimony of St. Paul. St. Paul is telling us about this armor of God, the whole armor of God. How can we defend ourselves? How can we defend our soul from the charge of the devil? Paul starts saying, be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his might. We are only strong when we are strong in the Lord. Be strong in the Lord. Our strength is the Lord. We are not strong by ourselves. And many times we think that we are strong, that we can do things by ourselves. But this is pride. This is a sin. We are strong. We have to be strong in the Lord. Sure, the Lord gives us natural graces. But to be strong, this strength that Paul is talking about is the strength that comes from the Holy Spirit, is the strength that comes from the presence and the power of God. Paul continue, put on the whole armor of God. And what is the armor of God? And he gives us a list. What is the armor of God? Before he says, because why do we need to put this armor of God? Because we are not fighting with people. We are fighting with evil forces. We are fighting fighting with spiritual forces. Many times we think that our brothers and sisters are our enemies. No, they are not. We don't have enemies here on earth. The enemies that we fight is the evil forces, the ones to make us far from the Lord. The forces, the ones to leave us this mark in this darkness. For us do not serve the Lord, for us do not be apostles like yesterday we celebrated Simon and Jude. Those forces, ones that we don't serve the Lord, 
And that's why we need to put the armor of God. And the whole armor of God is to help us to withstand, to be standing. The glory of God is man standing. The glory of God is to see that we are sons and daughters of his most sacred heart standing. The Lord loves to see men standing in this posture of resurrection. And the armor of God is to fasten the belt of truth. Belt of truth. The breastplate of righteousness. And then the shield of faith. So truth, righteousness, and faith will help us, will be this armor of God that will help us. And for helmet, salvation, the word of the spirit, the word of God, the sword of The sword, I'm sorry, the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. What is the sword of the spirit? The word of God. The word of God that cuts and penetrates anything and everything. The word of God can change every heart and can win us for us the battles that we need to face. That's why we do Lectio Divina. That's why we encourage people to do Lectio Divina. Is the word of God. There is this, there is our armor, but it's this weapon that will help us to grow in holiness and that will help us to win every battle we have in our lives. And the responsorial psalm today tells us, Blessed be the Lord, my rock, who trains my hands for war and my fingers for battle. My mercy and my fortress, my stronghold and my deliverer, my shield in he, my shield and he in whom I take refuge, who subdues my people under me. I will sing a new song to you, O God, upon a ten stringed harp I will play, who give victory to kings, who rescue David your servant from the cruel sword. So the, the, the sword of the Spirit is the Word of God, but the sword of the evil one is a cruel sword. And the Lord wants to give us the sword of His Spirit. And the psalmist sings that the Lord trains His hand for war and His fingers for battle. The Lord wants to train our hands for war and fingers for battle. Hands that take the Word of God. Fingers that go in all the pages and help us to be fortified by his word to be fed by his word nourished by his word and then we can proclaim his goodness we can fight against all the evil with the word of god and the gospel for today gospel of saint luke chapter 13 today verses 31 to 35 it jesus makes a lament over jerusalem Some Pharisees came to Jesus and said, Get away from here, for Herod wants to kill you. And he said to them, Go and tell that fox, Behold, I cast out demons and perform cures today and tomorrow, and the third day I finish my course. Nevertheless, I must go on my way today and tomorrow and the day after tomorrow. For it cannot be that a prophet should perish away from Jerusalem. O Jerusalem, Jerusalem, killing the prophets and stoning those who are sent to you. How often would I have gathered your children together as a hen gathers her brood under her wings, and you would not. Behold, your house is forsaken, and I tell you, You will not see me until you say, Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Christ here, he first is giving the mess a message to the Pharisees that said, Get away from here, 
Herod wants to kill you, and Jesus called him a fox. But what did he mention? What, he, what did he mean by this expression, fox? The fox was regarded as the slightest of all animals and one of the most destructive as well. So, in this mentality of a farmer mentality, of a countryside mentality, the fox is this danger animal. They will get away with everything that you have. The fox became a symbol of destruction. So he's calling Herod a fox. He's calling Herod. He's telling that Herod will, will try to destroy the work of God. Herod won't destroy the work of God. He wants to destroy. And Jesus says, I, ha I perform cure today, tomorrow, and the day after tomorrow. On the third day, I will end my work. I need to preach today and tomorrow, and I will continue preaching. Jesus is saying that no human power can stop him. No human power will stop him to preach. And no human power can stop his disciples, his apostles, to preach. And then Jesus go and cry over Jerusalem, saying, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, I wanted to gather you as a hen gathered her broad, but you didn't listen. The Lord is saying, it's in Jerusalem we can put the name of each one of us. It's like the Lord telling us, each one of us, I want to gather you as my children. Do not live like you are not my children. The Lord cries, lament over Jerusalem. And He can do the same over our souls. But if we live by this armor of God, if we have those weapons that St. Paul told us, the Lord won't need to cry over us because we will be fighting, preaching, evangelizing with Him. The work that He has to do, that He does today, tomorrow, and the day after tomorrow, we will be together with Him doing it. We have this armor of faith, love, righteousness, justice, salvation. We will be united to our Lord to perform those works of salvation and to help others to find the Lord. In this Lexia Divina, we can ask, what are the arm what are the armors that I need? What are the weapons that I need to go on, to keep going in this mission that the Lord has for me, to help him in my house, with my friends, with my child, with my community. And also, where do I need to improve to get this strength? To be able to work with the Lord today, tomorrow, and the day after tomorrow until He completes His course. The Lord is asking us to be with Him, to be the disciples united to Him and united to His heart, united in His work. St. Therese of the, ch the Child Jesus said, Jesus does not ask for great achievements, only surrender and gratitude. Jesus does not ask for great achievements. He is not asking for us to be the great saints, greater than, than St. Peter, than Mother Teresa, than St. Francis de Sales, and many other saints. He is asking us to surrender and to be grateful for everything that we have. To surrender our will and to have gratitude. Because surrendering ourselves to Him and being grateful for everything that we have, we have this armor of faith, this armor of God. We will be united with Him. We will be good disciples of His, united to His heart, united in His mission. May the Lord bless us today. May the Lord give us this understanding that we don't need to do great things. We don't need great achievements. We just need to surrender to Him and to be grateful for everything that we have. Amen.